I've spoken about the divine feminine with some mixed reviews. All good. Let's see how speaking about the divine masculine plays. In the workplace, men have dominated for centuries. Masculine traits and behaviors have been established as a standard. As I said before, people of all sexes and genders have every kind of reproductive hormone, albeit in different amounts. There is no male or female hormone. Similarly, humans carry both masculine and feminine energy and tendencies. How do we acknowledge and heal the divine masculine so it is not at odds with the divine feminine, both being inherent in all of us, and support a rebalancing of power and justice to create a healthier environment for all? Hi, I'm Jenny Clark, a conscious leadership expert who spent two decades in executive recruiting and talent management. Having worked with giants like Google, Spencer Stewart, I discovered that the secret to transformative leadership lies in the five dimensions of conscious leadership. And I'm here to help you unlock your full potential. Join me on this channel as we embark on an honest and vulnerable journey together to become the kind of leader that genuinely inspires organizational transformation. I have a few ways you can get involved in this conscious community. First, I've created a free career map to help you uncover your next career move. Second, I've created exclusive content for you with a community of like-minded leaders. And lastly, I send out a free newsletter every week. To learn more, check out the description of this video. Promoting a healthier and more balanced environment in the workplace involves recognizing and appreciating the full spectrum of human qualities and energies, both masculine and feminine, found in both men and women. Let's open our minds and explore some steps to acknowledge and heal the divine masculine and foster greater harmony and justice in the workplace. So I've consulted the works of a creative visionary and author of spiritual works, Alana Fairchild, to learn about our inner or divine feminine and inner or divine masculine. And here's what I learned. The inner masculine and our inner feminine need each other. When they are in good inner relationship with us, we feel like healthy, whole beings. We're able to live as ourselves in the world in a relatively peaceful, creative, and enjoyable way. When there's damage to the inner masculine, there's difficulty in standing up for our truths and knowing what our truths and values are, and in knowing how to protect them without feeling as though we have to fight constantly just to be allowed to be ourselves. We might also feel that unless others see things as we do, we have no power. And then they have to fight to dominate others, manipulating them to our point of view. The divine masculine within men and women is the energy that allows for protection, discernment, healing, and a sense of deep safety and holding, even though the most uncomfortable circumstances of life. When the masculine within us is healthy and strong, we have an inner strength to hold ourselves safe through anything. It is believed that our inner masculine is going through healing right now, growing stronger in its ability to offer protection and stability so that the inner feminine can blossom with creative expression. Does that part about fighting to dominate others and manipulating them to our point of view sound familiar? I'm talking on a macro level. This isn't just about your personal inner conflict and need for balance, but a collective mindset that can also become insidiously prevalent in organizations and societies. I think it's fair to say that we are seeing this imbalance between masculine and feminine, not to mention at a personal level. Now, again, this is less about gender identity and orientation, more about behaviors and mindsets that are serving the few or the all. As individuals, our goal should be to seek balance. I'm asking you to imagine a world where not only is there balance and equity, but profound respect for the characteristics that we all share and are needed in the world today. Now, they have always been needed. I think it's time. Question the origin and use historical systems and paradigms and to the extent to which they are still relevant and useful. Since women didn't join the workforce until the 1910s and married women until the 1930s, we were expected to assimilate, even bow down to the norms that men had established in the workplace. This also meant we were not and still aren't paid an equal wage, by the way. Promote gender balance in the decision-making processes at all levels of the organization. 
Diverse perspectives lead to better informed decisions. Encourage open discussions about gender stereotypes and biases that may exist in the workplace. Create a safe space for people to share their experiences and perspectives and focus on leadership qualities that represent both masculine and feminine energies and mindsets. Encourage leaders to cultivate a well-rounded leadership style. This is about balance, remember? Also, ensure equal pay for equal work and equal opportunities for advancement. Address any gender-based pay gaps or disparities. Here's the thing, creating a workplace that acknowledges and embraces both the divine masculine and divine feminine energies fosters a more inclusive, harmonious, and just environment for all employees. It recognizes the unique qualities and contributions of individuals without limiting them based on gender stereotypes. Ultimately, this approach can lead to greater creativity, innovation, and overall well-being in the workplace. I know firsthand how taking that first step can be the catalyst for a life-changing transformation. I remember the moment I decided to harness my own strengths, and it made all the difference in my career. That's why I created a career mapping tool just for you, to help you uncover your unique competencies and leverage them to design your own career map. Take the first step towards your next level by clicking the link in the video description and let's start this incredible journey together.